Hello everyone and welcome to Blank First Page. My name is Lucas. In this video I'm going to tell you how and why I used this one pen to write over 4,000 kilometers worth of lines. So this started around 2014. I was a few pocket notebooks into my notebook habit but I hadn't yet started any project or subject specific notebook yet. Around this time I started getting interested in the subject of investing and I wanted to start a proper kind of learning process to get myself into this field. So the first thing I decided on obviously was which notebook I was going to use for this whole process and for that I picked this essential notebook from L'Atelier du Papier and it's a notebook I bought on one of my trips to Belgium uh, where my dad was living at the time uh, so this was bought in Brussels in 2012. And then came the problem of the pen. So I knew this learning process would be something I'd be working on manually with pen on paper for a number of years. The subject is vast, there's lots to learn and I wanted to use the physical act of writing as a tool to help me internalize and kind of absorb all the information and knowledge that I was going to try and accumulate. One of the ways I learn a new subject, especially at the start, is to transcribe a lot. When you're starting from scratch you don't have any opinions and original ideas, so I find one of the best things you can do is to just transcribe the writings of the greats. So I knew I was going to be transcribing a lot of letters from the great investors, chapters from books and emails that my dad would be sending me. He's an investor so he was guiding me through this learning process. So there was a lot of material I was going to write down and I had an idea. I knew that this was going to probably span hundreds of pages. Most importantly I wanted to be able to focus on the subject itself and not be held back by what I was writing with. From my school experiences I knew that no matter how interested you are in the subject if you're writing for long sessions eventually you get tired. And the main contributor to that is the pen that you choose. So I knew I had to pick this pen very carefully. So I set myself a few criteria so that I could choose the right pen. Firstly I needed access to this pen so because I was going to write for many years many hundreds of pages I was going to use a lot of these pens potentially lose them so I needed to be able to buy them easily regularly so it needed to be a readily available pen. It had to have a fine point. So my handwriting is naturally quite scruffy and scrunched together and long writing sessions only make that worse. It gets even more compressed and kind of garbled up. And when you have a fine nib the line that you make on the paper is thinner which means you have more white space around the individual line, the letter and the word and that extra white space that is left around the individual words gives the appearance that the word is more legible even though your handwriting might be a bit on the rough side. And the final criteria was that the pen had to perform well, it had to be reliable and it had to deliver consistently. I didn't want to be dealing with the point balling up, line skipping, it just freezing up, the ink running dry. My main focus here had to be what I was learning. I didn't want the writing instrument to put me off the process. So the pen I finally landed on was this Uniball I in the micro nib and it is a pen made by the Mitsubishi Pencil Company Limited, made in Japan. Here I have a black and a blue version but throughout my use of the pen I only ever used the blue version and that's because through my school and university days I had been brainwashed into thinking that blue is the only color you should write in. How did I find out about this pen? In one of my Explorer B trips to stationery stores where I just go and sample different types of stationery to what I currently have just to see if there are new tools that I can add to my kind of arsenal. This pen caught my eye specifically because it had the word micro on it. Because of what I just said about my handwriting I was always looking out for fine nibs and finer nibs and I'd never seen anything that claimed to have a micro nib so that caught my attention. I kind of played around with it quickly in the stationery store so that it was quite a smooth pen for having a very fine nib 
and it was an extremely fine nib. So I just bought it at the time. This was a few months before I started this project and it just sat in my pen box um, without much thought. One thing I noticed though, once, once I had bought it, and this often happens, is once you're aware of something, you then start seeing it many other places. And I noticed that this particular pen where I was living in the UK, I could get it in all the stationery stores, some general school supply stores, and most surprisingly in some supermarkets as well. So as I started thinking about it, it kind of it ticked that box of the easily available. So once a few of those criteria started ticking in my head, I pulled this pen out and started looking at it a bit more to see if in fact it would be a good contender. Then when, as I was looking at it, one of the other things I liked was that it is very easily postable, posts very firmly, sits well in the hand, both unposted, and if you're in the mood then for posting, it is not overly long. The cap is quite light, so it doesn't add too much weight on the back end. It creates a comfortable grip. One of the things I like to do to avoid getting tired in long writing sessions is to change the feel of the pen in the hand. You could obviously change pens, but I didn't want to do that in this case, but the act of posting uh, the cap onto the back of the pen gives enough of a different feel that you write slightly differently, your hand holds it slightly differently, so you're using different muscles, which means that you can write for longer because you're not getting into that repetitive strain injury thing where you're always in the same kind of claw of the hand, and that's how, obviously, then the pain starts. In this first notebook that I used, I still have the pen test, at the back recorded, the Mitsubishi Pencil Company Limited Uniball I Micro. Very good for my handwriting, mostly due to the fine tip of the pen, which by default refines and defines my letters, allowing even my handwriting to be read easily. And I deemed the pen suitable for use, having tested it in my field notes, the Rodia type of paper, and a few other types of notebooks that I had at the time, including this one. And that was the selection uh, and it worked out beautifully. I wrote with the pen exclusively for over four and a half years and I've worked out doing some calculations that I wrote for a total of over four kilometers with this pen. I think, I don't know exactly, but my estimate is that I bought somewhere between 20 and 30 pens and I filled the majority of these three notebooks specifically just with that pen. So having written so much with this single pen, I can safely review a few of the features. It is definitely reliable. It did not skip a single line in these over four years and over four kilometers of writing. This isn't a ballpoint pen, so the ink is closer to a fountain pen ink, but because it is such a fine tip, it dries super quickly, no smudges. It didn't leak a single time. I had this in pockets, bags, airplanes, cars, wherever, not a single drop leaked out. It's very robust. It's not made out of expensive materials, obviously, but it is hard wearing plastic. This printed on silver paint kind of wears off eventually, but you can throw these pens around. Nothing's going to happen to them. No ink's gonna come flying out of them. You can be very comfortable using these pens aggressively. It has this nice ink window feature. So there is actually a lot of ink that is held in the barrel of this pen. Uh, and as you start using it, you will see how much ink is left. And usually once I got to this last marker on the pen closest to the nib, that is when I would go and buy the next pen. Finally, from a writing feel. This is a nib fineness, which I haven't seen in any other pen of this type. Uh, I'm sure there are, but in my experience, the risk when you have such fine nibs is that 
they become a bit too scratchy. Across all these papers, and I've used this pen in my field notes as well, and in a few other types of papers, it is that perfect, most medium balance between scratchy and gliding. I don't like the super glidey pens, I don't like the super scratchy, I definitely err on the side of the scratchy feedback, and this is one of those pens that just hits the mark. I eventually just stopped using this pen because I switched over to my Twisby 580 ALR with the platinum carbon black. My kind of ink color philosophy had changed over that time. I definitely moved to the writing in black side of things. And I also relaxed my writing with only one type of pen for one project rule. I definitely still try to stick with one pen for a notebook, but I will more gladly switch it up between notebooks, even if I'm still working on the same project. I've learned to embrace the variety a bit more and work on my stationary OCD. I'm pleased to see that these pens are still in production. I went to buy these pens for this video in 2023 and they are still readily available. And actually I've been using them to scratch around on a few of my different notebooks now and I'm keen to get them back in rotation. So as a live writing test, and for all time's sake, I'm going to transcribe a page's worth of one of my favorite investing books into my current investing notebook using this black uniball. So if you're looking for a long-term, frequent-use, reliable pen, look no further than this Uniball. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.